I do indeed record these sessions. It will be posted to my YouTube channel and included in a recap. The recap will include a ton of notes as well as links to various things I talk about throughout the session. This class is kind of split into two parts. There's a little bit of a lecture in the beginning to get us started and then a example I have as an example, I should say, I have a video that I've already created that we'll get to watch and run through. And then I'll open up for questions at the end. My goal is to get out of here in that 45 minute window. So my only housekeeping tips are that I request that everybody please remain muted through the entirety of the session. I do take questions at the end, like I noted, and you can feel free to unmute yourself then. If you're worried about forgetting anything, feel free to open up the chat. It'll open up on either side of my head and you can type your question in there. I'll address it at the end of the session uh, with the rest of the questions then. Other than that, Feel free to take whatever notes you like. I do send a fairly comprehensive recap and you can always feel free to reach back out to me after the class if you have any questions as well or your local FMS either or are equipped to help you through this. For anyone that does not know me, my name is Anuj. I am the field marketing specialist here in Santa Cruz and Monterey County. And today we're going over a few best practices for open houses and virtual tours, both in a live as well as a recorded sense, because there's very little difference operationally between the two. Virtual open house houses and tours save a lot of time for both the agent and potential buyers. Uh, virtual open houses let buyers reach more properties in more places by way of various platforms that show tours on, you know, both recorded and live off whatever a consumer wants to use. So it allows an agent to not only advertise their brand and business and how you operate to a worldwide audience of potential consumers, but it allows the client of yours to gain exposure through the means of marketing that can get spread across various channels, even though you only have the one video. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, processing those things into a marketing plan. We've had a handful of people just join us, so I'm just going to note, please remain muted through the entirety of the session. I do take questions at the end. I haven't really gotten into anything outside of my introduction, so don't worry, you haven't missed much. Uh, again, just to note for the people that are a little late, I am Anuj, I'm the field marketing specialist here in Santa Cruz and Monterey County. We're going over some best practices for virtual open houses and tours. I've got a little lecture section at the beginning. We'll watch an example that I've created at the end and then go over questions. I also have a very comprehensive recap that'll be coming to you at the end of the class with a recording of this session, as well as a link to the video that I have created that you guys can watch for your own reference. Uh, so feel free to take whatever notes you like, but. Like I said, I'll, I'll be, I'll be uh, creating some and you can always feel free to reach out to me or your local F uh, FMS with any questions. The uh, jumping back to what I was saying, the virtual tours as well as uh, again, both live and recorded also allow an agent to capture potential new leads, create new content and build your brand because uh, <laughs> virtual and video tours are popping up on business listings as well as real estate websites. And with the shift through the coronavirus, more consumers are becoming expectant of them and they don't want slideshows with music. They want something that actively advertises a listing, the community that it's in, and it gives again the agent an opportunity to advertise their business, how they operate, and uh, gives a show versus tell opportunity for an agent to uh, give the potential consumer an idea of their marketing plan in action. This is also a, uh, like I keep saying, a self-marketing opportunity. You get to introduce yourself to both potential buyers, but as well as to potential consumers. So there's always two channels to think about this is there's potential buyers watching and potential consumers that will want to leverage the things you're doing both 
to advertise communities, brands, whatever you're doing in your website, this specific opportunity is a tour and how they can leverage that for themselves. And I think before I dive in to a little bit of the rest of the, the discussion or the lecture segment of this, I want to give a little quote from one of my top agents that I work with that does this in Santa Cruz County fairly regularly. She's got a great online presence. And the thing she always expresses to new agents or agents that are trying to craft a identity for themselves when they're doing these kind of things is to remember that your consumers don't necessarily care how you look or how much quality uh, uh, or, or how much I should say um, pizzazz for lack of a better word uh, there is to the production. What they do want is transparency, authenticity, and the real you to provide up and show relevant information on that community as well as the property you're in. Over 50% of buyers find their house online and of those 50%, 90% still use an agent to make their purchase. And given, again, the shifts that we project happening to all business going into the future, a virtual open house is an opportunity for an agent to capture leads and generate content to better market themselves and create a larger online footprint and game the SEO systems a little bit, uh, a little bit more in their favor. So uh, hopefully we're all looking at a slide. I'm gonna jump to the next one. How does it all start? You wanna create a plan. Anybody that's taken any of my classes knows I'm big on workflow. And you want to treat the marketing and, and tour of a home just like you would with a actual consumer there. And you want to think about that camera like that consumer, except instead of talking to one specific individual, you are talking to everyone that is interested in watching. I always recommend making a room sheet. It's what we did for the example property that I ran through and run through the, you know, there's something you want to, you can, you can practice in an hour ahead of time. We got there and broke it down and it's a, it was a two person job. So you don't need a lot of people. If you're going live, I do recommend a minimum of three people. And I do talk about that in the video. Uh, the difference between the live portion and the recorded version is the script you're going to use for the recorded version. You obviously can stop, redo things, edit things, and, and kind of change as you move through. But if you're going live, you're going to want to have something prepared that you can run through and have someone that's fielding questions and comments that are coming in on whatever platform you're using, whether it be, you know, Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Um, if you're using one of those platforms, the whole goal is to get some kind of engagement. Now, there is an advantage to going live algorithmically with these kind of uh, listings. They tend to, based on both YouTube and Facebook's statistics, engage consumers at a rate of about 300% more, but that is assuming you've got at least a 20 minute lead in time for that video to run. So essentially what you want to do when I talk about having a room sheet with points and knowing how you want to walk through the house is have a essential soft script and know what that tour looks like because the difference between the recorded version and the live version is you'll essentially loop yourself in the live virtual tour and do that again for a couple of hours just like you would mentally thinking if you were holding a traditional open house and you had someone walking in every 20 minutes that you were showing the home to. You want to kind of think about it and be in that headspace because once that live tour is done, you'll get a recorded segment. Much like this class that I'm doing, I'll get a recorded video back that I can then condense down if I wanted to down to that one section tour or whichever one uh, you could either choose. And this is where a lot of agents differ. It depends on your strategy and how you like to um, present things. And all of these different options have, um, have their strengths. 
but you could choose a segment where you have high engagement and you're answering lots of questions and there's lots of comments coming in. You could do one that's just a clean tour that feels much more like a planned walkthrough. You could re-edit the whole thing to be just a, uh, a virtual open house that you can repurpose. But all of them, the goal here is to have something planned that you can walk through both uh, if you're doing it live and that you can cut down and then repurpose that video across various platforms. So you've got the event itself, whether it's li a live event or a premiere date for a recorded video, you've got that initial one on whatever platform it's launching on. Usually it'll be YouTube because that will, if it's incorporated as a part of your marketing strategy, will be where you're hosting videos so you could repurpose them on things like your website, in newsletters, um, any anywhere you can you can that any kind of collateral that's digital that you're sending out YouTube is probably one of the better places to be hosting videos. Um, I do have a YouTube 100 and uh, 101 class that I that I teach. It's also a recorded class you could find later, but I digress um, back to this. You want to make sure you've got a ongoing plan and workflow set for what starts with the home and what you want to do with that video afterwards. And the only equipment you're going to need, and I've got links to all of these, like three recommended options for all of these items that I will include in the recap, but you can always do your own homework. Um, by all means, the, the options I send you are, are varied in prices, but I tried to keep things as low cost as possible. But the first thing you're gonna wanna use, and it's something that we use in my video, is something called a Steadicam. It's a mounted option for your camera, or your smartphone that you can buy online and will allow your camera to move smoothly. If you uh, notice there's a strong difference between when you're holding your phone on its own, you get those little handheld shakes. This will make it much more like a professional video and keep it smooth and keep a consumer, especially if it's a longer video, from feeling a little motion sick or uneasy because the camera is constantly rocking. The second thing you're going to want to think about is a box or ring light. I have both examples that I will include in the recap. They are lights that will make sure to project an even smooth light source on the subject, which in this case is always going to be you talking about the home you are in. So you want to make sure that you show up clean against the background. You don't show up washed out. Again, it's a small touch that will add a huge plus to the end product to make sure that your uh, uh, videos and your tours come off clean and professional and effective in marketing your brand to consumers. And lastly, you wanna make sure you have your camera. Most phones are as good as any camera you're going to buy unless you're going into like the high-end professional realm. Um, if you're not paying anybody to do these and you want to do these yourselves, I highly recommend just using your phone. Make sure it's in airplane mode prior to starting filming. That way you don't get calls or buzzes during the setting. In this particular example that I did, I used a, a an Apple iPhone. Uh, a lot of agents have them. They're, they're great cameras. Android cameras are just as well. I actually have an Android, but my, uh, my agent had the new iPhone, so I figured I might as well try it out. And... Uh, Either or is a great option, and plus it allows you to easily get the footage right onto your computer because if you um, upload it to your OneDrive from your phone, you can access it in your computer. If you're not using OneDrive, you could use whatever cloud storage provider uh, that, you, that you use. I mentioned OneDrive because it's included in your, oops, it's included in your ASP as a part of your uh, desk package. So if you have questions about uh, cloud storage, reach out to your FMS and ask them about that. You guys do get a ton from Coldwell Banker as a part of your Office 365 that you can utilize. Now, once you have all of those pieces together and you know exactly what you're going to do at the property and you've got all the tools you need to do it, you wanna treat the marketing, just like we talked about how you're treating the camera like a traditional consumer, and you're walking through the property like you would have a constant flow of consumers at an open house, you wanna treat marketing the virtual tour or the virtual uh, live tour 
like you would a traditional open house. So you want to make sure you have a planned workflow for that as well. Uh, reach out to your FMS and talk to them about a social media or marketing calendar. A lot of us are handing those out to a lot of our agents. They are a great tool to get used to if you don't already have some kind of scheduled uh, system for your marketing. These are a great um, these these are a great way to kind of get you started if you're thinking about doing virtual tours and and thinking about what's the grand scheme of how this affects my brand and my marketing plan and how this um, increases the awareness of my brand to my market as well as my current consumers. You know, this is where reaching out to your FMS becomes huge and valuable to kind of talk about not just a marketing plan, but a business plan. If you, if you do have all those things in place, this is where all you have to do is slide the potential tour or a uh, video that you're launching in just like you would in open house, right? So launch it to your sphere, plan on when it's going to be posted on social media accounts, um, utilize your story to remind consumers like, hey, on Tuesday, the uh, what is it? Tuesday, the the third or fourth. I've got a tour happening. It's going to go live at you know 4:30 p.m. It'll be running until eight or uh, not eight, but uh, running until like 7 p.m. Feel free to chime in if you have any questions. Here's the link or the links in my bio or the links in an email or on my website. Wherever you should be posting it everywhere. Or if it's a video that you're posting, the video is going to be premiering on YouTube or on my website. Or uh, if you're in my mailing list, it'll be sent out to you on Thursday. Otherwise, it's premiering on Friday here. All of the links are made available, et cetera, right? Work these things into a scheme that leads up a solid week or two ahead of the video. I wouldn't push it beyond two weeks because that's a big ask to to have your consumers excited for something for for uh, uh, more than 14 days. But uh, you want to think about this, like I said, just like you would anything else that you have. And if you have multiple listings, plan them out cyclically, right? So they don't overlap with each other and then you can leverage that over multiple platforms. And again, once the video is done and it goes live, you can follow up by sharing it across multiple platforms so you can reach your consumers wherever they happen to find you because not everybody's going to be on YouTube at the right time or always on your website or on Instagram. But this way, if it's slowly rolling out over the course of several weeks across all those platforms, you'll have a better chance of capturing as many people as you can effectively. Make sure you're updating your websites and other sources like MLS to reflect the events. Um, and then, know, like I said, know what you're doing with the video afterwards. I am going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen for a second and stop talking because I am going to start that video, I promise. This is an example that's just going to walk through some of the things I've talked about and show them in real time, give you an idea of what I'm trying to share, and then we'll open up the floor for questions afterwards. Again, feel free to put anything in the chat as we're going along. And here we go. Hello, welcome everyone to 17590 Crossroad here in Salinas, California. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Anuj. I'm the field marketing specialist here in Santa Cruz in Monterey County. And today we're gonna review some best practices, tips, tricks, and kind of fundamental technique when thinking about presenting both open houses and live tours. All right, so what's the agenda today? I'm gonna kind of walk through both how the video and tour is structured and what you wanna think about consciously while doing these kind of walkthroughs. The first thing you're gonna notice I am following all the guidelines that are necessary in my county to alleviate any kind of consumer needs or concerns in relation to how I conduct business. Don't 
have any questions raised that are unnecessary and don't put yourself in a spot where those questions need to be raised. Make sure you do everything handy, meaning having a mask on. And you'll notice I'm taking time to make sure both my voice is coming through in a clean and precise manner, as well as putting a little extra emphasis to make sure my diction comes through clear as to not mumble or confuse anybody while trying to talk through a mask. Again, like I said, we are at 17590 Crossroad here in Salinas, which is the salad bowl of the world. It's a little fun fact for you guys. Per acre, we grow more food here in Salinas than any other part of the planet. Always have little great tips that you can share, both about the home that you are touring and talking about, as well as the community that it resides in. It's important to stress that you're not just buying into a series of wooden planks and stone, but you're buying into a community and a space where I, your agent, can be a valued resource in helping you guide and navigate this community into places that are in it. Here we have the home. I'm gonna highlight some of the basic details before we walk in. It's got four bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, two and a half acres, a barn, a wonderful fire pit area kind of place in the back. It's got great fresh air, a beautiful breeze. You can probably see hitting my shirt as I am talking. Highlight the things that you can be descriptive and imaginative with, right? Insert a bit of character here, insert a bit of yourself. Talk about things that you can imagine doing. I'd love to have a horse out here grow my own food, be able to grow tomatoes, zucchinis, peppers, all the good stuff. And let's go ahead and walk in and talk about what this place looks like as a home. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back from our commercial break. If you forgot, this is an edge. We're talking about 17590 Crossroad here in Salinas. Make sure you Google that, find the address, homes.com. Plug yourself, plug the brand. I'm going to take a quick moment to pause. Obviously, I talked earlier about the importance of making sure you alleviate any kind of subconscious concerns regarding our pandemic from your consumer's mind by following all the rules based on your county's guidelines for how to deal with this pandemic. But I digress. What you want to also use this opportunity to do to bring. I work for Cold Bull Banker. I'm wearing a Cold Bull Banker mask. You guys can order these from CB Store, but I also would stress take the opportunity to get something like this that includes both the brokerage logo and your own personal branding as well. If you got something from Design Concierge made, leverage these moments. That's what a brand is for. That's why you see the Nike swoosh on everything they make because they want you to know where it comes from. The entire time I'm talking, you could be looking at my branding and logo and thinking about who you should be buying your home with, or more importantly, what we're building through this video is the perception of what it's like to work with me and who I am as a person and as an agent. So we get all kinds of marketing approaches that we build into this one walkthrough and video that can reach a worldwide audience and let them know what your brand is like to operate with, what it looks like visually, and so it sticks with them whenever they think both questions about real estate and questions about the community you just were operating and walking in. This is the beautiful living room. You can see we've got, if any of you guys watch the Food Network, I'm a big fan of Alton Brown's Good Eats, so it's cooking awesome stuff on a weird thing like this. You can have one of these in your house if you were to so choose and find a location just like this. You know, again, insert some of yourself, insert some of your character, walk through the home and have fun with it. Now, now, the difference between a live walkthrough and a recording is like what you just saw. I was able to cut something that went poorly, like my booty falling off, and jump now into my next point without missing a beat. There's no must, no fuss. And this recording is obviously tailored to focus on both marketing the property and marketing myself primarily as an agent to anybody that is watching. Live, 
is where you really stress the, uh, the team aspect of this. I obviously am not operating on a camera myself. The camera person with me that is also following social distance guidelines, wearing the boobies, wearing the mask. But if I were live on, let's say, YouTube Live or Facebook Live or Instagram, whatever the platform you are using, I have the additional person here. We will have a laptop set up. Let's say for this example, I'm using Facebook Live. As questions, comments, um, things like that come into the space, I have someone that's able to vet and check those and bring them up for me. That way I don't have to worry about any awkward pauses or slip ups as I'm walking through the home. Because the beauty of a live is like what I can do here. If we get questions, hey, someone wants to know specifically what's going on in this space. Well, we've got two bedrooms. You've got your master suite. We're going to get a bit of an echo as we move into this part of the house. So I'm going to try and adjust my voice accordingly. You'll hear my watch go off. It's a good note to remember you mute all of your devices when doing these kinds of tours and walkthroughs. As we move into each specific room, you're going to want to make sure your cameraman always pushes back off of you and you step back out of frame continue to push back so we can get an idea of scaling in whichever room you are in. I am just about 5, 10, 5, 11, and you can see what I am like to move around in this space and how my height fits every room that I walk in. It just kind of helps with the dynamic, plus it gives your viewer a good idea of exactly what space they are looking at. If, let's say, going back to my discussion about live, we get someone that asks, hey, what was that door you passed in the hallway? I can say this door that I passed, just because the question wasn't super specific, this door is a closet, and this door is a half bathroom. It is one of the bathrooms included in the two and a half I mentioned earlier. Right there. Got another bedroom there, and again, the big difference is if I were live, I couldn't just go off the cuff like I am in this example for the class because I don't have the ability or the, um, I should say, the comfort of being able to jump back, edit, and reshoot something. You want to have a series of bullet points tailored out for what you're going to highlight for the house. And I always stress if you're talking four bullet points about the region of the house you're in, one about the community that the home is in. So uh, we just talked about the living room, talked about a couple of the bathrooms. Did you also know that Salinas was the home of former Nobel laureate John St And the Steinbeck Library is one of the coolest assets available to residents of this town. Big fan of libraries. Y'all should grab a book and enjoy it in this lovely kitchen that has been recently remodeled and has an induction stove. Not a huge fan of induction stoves because you don't get the fire, but you get a lovely stove, oven, you got a dishwasher. Again, highlight things, insert yourself, and most importantly, in regards to a video, if you're shooting this after the fact, this is where I would take time to cut from the portion and go to what we would call coverage shots. I would, as you can tell in the edit that you're watching, you're listening to my voice talk over several shots of the kitchen we're in, as well as the bonus room that we're walking into that includes a sink. It's got awesome half carpet, half fake tile, kind of floor going on. It reminds me of what my ideal man cave would look like. Put a big old TV on this brick wall because you know it wouldn't go anywhere. Get some really nice chairs right here. Or you can just get projected from the ceiling. Got great supports with this giant beam running through. I mean, it's a fun spot, right? It's a fun space. And more importantly, right, in a video wherein you are cutting stuff together, 
I can either keep the audio I'm recording live and use it as a map over for while I walk through the space, or you can always dub audio after the fact. What you want to have planned out both in the ahead of time before you're doing your live video and just to make your life easier when shooting in the space that you're going to operate in is know how you're going to walk through each of the rooms, where the camera needs to be, where you need to be. And I think it's important to use this time. We talked at the beginning about how I talk and enunciate and make sure my diction comes through clear and effectively even through the mask. I'm doing this because we tested everything and we discovered we didn't need me to wear a lapel mic or any kind of AirPods or earbuds or anything like that because it wasn't feet coming through clear enough direct from the source as we walk through each of the rooms. Now, that will not be the case for every home you are in. So it's important to test run all of these things before you go through your property and you're walking room to room like you would treating that camera like it's the client that you're showing this home to. You've got all these pretty views right outside. Oh. <laughs> the other thing you can't do live that you can do with the pre-planned video is make sure you can cut your cameraman out of the mirrors and allow the person watching the video to truly feel like you're talking specifically to them as a client and not to anyone as a whole. This is the last bathroom upstairs. It's got a lovely shower curtain of the world. Feels like home, doesn't it? And that's what we want to do is we make these places feel like home, try and tell a story about the community that we live in and the way we would utilize this space or can see your clients utilizing this space in the future. Whether you're a single rancher who wants to grow their own self-sustaining environment in this wonderful abode, or you want to raise a generational ranch and utilize the two and a half acres to build a, uh, you know, a family and build another, you know, utilize the barn for something or other. You can do whatever. It'll be your property. Have your dreams. Have your fun. Be yourself in these walkthroughs. And again, live or not. Once the talk through is done, once the property has been shown, you can take this video, condense it, and repurpose it across multiple platforms to make sure you're leveraging it as a part of your marketing strategy. And that's the big thing that we want to think about, right? What do each of these tours, open houses, walk through showings, how can they have multiple effects and be used to what the real purpose is to advertise you as the agent who should be both used by someone who needs to sell in this space because you care about this space, you know it, you love it, and you live it. Or you want to represent someone who's trying to buy in this space and who wants that piece of the lifestyle that you're constantly talking about. And we want to wrap up with how we structure it to walk outside and enjoy this little stroll here to the patio. And that's really it, guys. I know it might sound a little repetitive at times, but the important parts of this are always be yourself and find your groove to make sure that both the property and the region get advertised so you can convey to your consumers the kind of knowledge and expertise you have in the area that we're putting all this effort in to sell. Thank you all for kind of coming along.
along with me, right? We're ending on a highlight shot that makes, again, the consumer want to reach out, want to find out more about this beautiful space that I've spent this time talking and guiding you through. Making sure I leverage the video, again, to use on multiple platforms. We're going to jump back now to the live portion of this class. I will have this posted in the recap for you guys to use and kind of think about in a functional sense for what you're putting together yourself. But remember, there's no copy, there's no formula that you need to copy. It's just be informative, make sure you're hitting all the right points, make sure you're coming through clear and represent yourself and your brand in a way that can come through to the consumer so they know what you're like to work with and why you're the best agent to represent them in, in Salinas, where we are. All right. So that's, that's about it as far as an example goes. Um, let's go ahead and see if anybody has any questions that you'd like to ask about anything that we've gone over today, both in regards to the planning or uh, execution of everything we've talked about. Feel free to unmute yourself or type it into the chat. Is anybody like done a open house or a virtual tour yet, either for a property for themselves or for another agent that they work with? Or anybody planning on doing one? There's something happening in the chat. Not yet. Awesome. So this gives you time to prepare, right? I mean, the, the great tool here is, is letting, like I say, you know, marketing outside of budget discussions that you have should generally be something that you agents are having a lot of fun with. It comes across to your consumers, specifically if you're not, and having a proper plan and knowing how to execute this stuff, doing trial runs with colleagues of your own, in your own spaces, in your own homes, in your own apartments, get comfortable speaking on camera, work on your diction and timbre, make sure your voice is clear, concise, easy to read, and then do the homework about the communities that you're in. Um, one thing I, I didn't talk about that uh, I only learned after I made the video is, is the neighborhood that the home is in had i known ahead of time when i was shooting the video i would have added the fun fact that in this community they've seen a year over year average price increase of 60 percent so it is a great community you know, including those kind of facts this is an opportunity like i said treated like an opportunity to advertise yourself and how you can be a knowledge base for potential consumers, not just about the community that you are in, but the real estate that is in it. Uh, slightly late, but what editing software would you suggest an agent use? Okay, so in regards to editing software, um, I actually, so I have, a, a, um, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. I've taught a couple of classes on like basic editing with that. Now that is not, a cheap software, nor is it a, a relatively simple one to get your hands around, even with my class. But, but like I said, production value, like in quality, isn't a huge thing consumers are necessarily looking for. You don't have to make videos that look like they were, you know, $5,000 deep. What consumers do care about is how relevant and concise and, and in some ways, entertaining the information can be to come across to them. So this is an opportunity to work on advertising yourself as an agent. I would use, I know, I know some of my colleagues have taught classes on like iMovie. Um, I'm not necessarily, I, like, I just use what I'm familiar with. There are tons of great things out there uh, at all various price levels, including free. Pick one and just do the do the necessary homework to get good at it and you'll be able like the stuff i i know for sure everything that i did in the software i was using could be accomplished in imovie if you have an apple computer and you have that for free 
So there's nothing elaborate that that happened there that you can't do with with free software. So I would, long story short, pick whatever software you think is manageable for you as an individual and run with it. Does that answer the uh, the question? I think I, I kind of got off on a tangent there a little bit. Are there any other questions that anybody has? I'm actually pretty proud of myself. Usually my classes run about 15 minutes late because I tend to I tend to ramble on. But looks like we are going to get out of here on time now. I will post a link here in the chat to a survey. That survey will also be available in the recap. Please feel free to, you know, any constructive criticism or comments of, you know, whatever you would like to share uh, goes right to my management team. I don't see it. Um, any any bit of feedback is always helpful, and I always appreciate it. Um, I will include a recap. Like I said, that'll include uh, a collection of links to some of the things I talked about that you should have in preparation for a tour. If you, uh, some of the things I talked about in regards to marketing planning and having a, uh, you know, thinking you, you really want to think about virtual tours as an asset that's being used as a part of a marketing arm like YouTube and then Instagram, Facebook. Um, newsletters, etc., all with the goal of driving a consumer back to the main hub, which is your website, right? And if, if you don't necessarily have your head wrapped around what a structure like that looks like or what cyclical marketing really is, reach out to your FMS. Feel free to reach out to me uh, if you have questions and, and kind of start thinking about how these things can be used for a bigger purpose and a long-term goal of driving awareness about your brand to consumers. I'm going to put uh, 40 seconds on the clock. If there are any other questions, go ahead and just stop the recording so I can let that wrap up.